Ryan or Ryan here uh, with some thoughts on Mimer and Askenembla. Alright. One giant clan from his came from his feet, the multi-headed and hostile son. And a couple from his upper body, possibly Mimer, according to Victor Rydberg. The third race came later. His hair be his hair became trees. The gods Odin, Hoener, and Lothur gave gifts to two trees. Thus we we from Askenembla are the most noble. Also the shore mentioned in the story from Snorri. I'll I'll be giving a reading from something Victor Rydberg wrote after reading my own my own thoughts. Symbolizing life in the Maternal Mother Goddess, like in Celtic tradition, Danu, and Rigveda. Very likely. Also, river, river water is symbolic of life. It could be called noble, life-giving and not hostile. Contrast this with the dark water of the open ocean under the waves which steal sailors away to the depths. Which would be you know, metaphorical of those who like to harm us and murder us. <clears throat> Alright, let me know what you think. Alright, so I'm reading this from Teutonic Mythology. Well, it's a PDF actually. Two giant clans. Two clans of giants. Whatever. Monster as large as the whole world, and even larger. The gods resolved to sacrifice him. That is to say, to slay him for sacred purposes. And from his limbs was created the present world. From his navel was made the atmosphere. From his head the canopy of heaven. From his two feet the earth. From his heart the moon. From his eye the sun. From his breath the wind, etc. His mouth became the Brahma, the priest. His arms became the Rajanya, the warrior. His thighs became the Vaisya, the third free caste. And from his feet arose the Sudra, the thrall. The two fundamental ideas of the myth concerning Purusha are, one, there was a primeval being who was not divine. The gods slew him and created the material world out of his limbs. Two, this pr primeval being gave rise to other beings of different ranks, and their rank corresponded with the position of the giant limbs from which they were created. Both these fundamental ideas reappear in the Teutonic myth concerning Emer. In regard to the former idea, we need only to quote what Fafthrudner's Mall says in Strophe 21. Of Emer's flesh the world was shapen, from his bones the rocks, the heavens from the head of the ice cold giant, from his blood the sea. In regard, and that's um, one of the important things to remember that Emer's blood becomes water, sea, and rivers. In regard to the second fundamental idea, it is evident from the Rig Veda account that it is not there found in the oldest form, but that after the rise of four castes among the Rig Veda Aryans, it was changed in order to furnish an explanation of the origin of these castes and make them at least as old as the present material world. Far more original and perfectly free from the influence of social ideas, it appears in the Teutonic mythology, where the 33rd strophe of Vafthrud Nersmal testifies concerning its character. A son and a daughter are said to have been born together under the Rimthurs' arm. Foot begat with foot, the strange-headed son of the wise giant. All right. And that's poetically expressing... Uh... That the lower, the descendants of the lower body are 
space and not not near not noble like the upper body descendants uh, in perfect harmony with this gilfaginning narrates under emer's left arm grew forth the man and the woman and his one foot begat with the other a son thence come different races it's mind-boggling how these these f fools think that uh universal osity actually makes sense and theologically with an osity it makes no sense that's ridiculous uh, the different races have this in common that they are giant races since they spring from emer but these giant races must at the same time have been widely different intellectually and physically since the mythology gives them different origins from different limbs of the progenitor and here dang it, from the progenitor where the hell is it different limbs of the progenitor okay and here as in rigveda it is clear that the lowest race was conceived as proceeding from the feet of the primeval giant. This is stated with sufficient distinctness in Vafthrudner's Mall, where we read that a strangely headed monster was born by them, while man and maid was born under the arm of the giant. And then he talks about the man could have been most likely Emer and his wife. I'm not so sure about that, but. I guess it's possible. Alright, All right, so let's get into the Platonic part of it. It is the Triple Godhead. I found this a while ago. It is the Triple Godhead, Wodenville or Vili and Whale, who form man out of the already present living organic matter. Here symbolized by the two trees. Here we should emphasize that man is not mankind as we know it today, proven by this Aryan myth, since there are other races which are not made from the same material. This is made clear in the lore of the Judeo-Christian, or the Jew Torah nonsense, where man, small m, is, or really ish, is created from the clay of the ground, which is inert matter. Clay is the soil beneath our feet. But the tree is rooted in the ground and yet reaches high into the heavens, especially the ash tree. Woden is the ecstatic energy. Will is the will. It's, really, it's usually Zilli as well. And whale is holiness. Here the important point is that man, lower species, is made up of the inert matter of the earth. But man, capital M, the high race, is made from the living organic matter which is rooted in the earth but which is also able to grow upwards towards the heavens, towards the home of the gods. This high race partakes of the past and the future, of the earth and the divine, of Ols, God, and Aesk, the ancestors. The man rune, or rune of man, is the rune of our folk and not of the whole of mankind. It is, it is the rune of the thinking man, creative man. The high race is both the serpent and the eagle. The serpent and the winged coiled serpent, which is esoteric. Uh, that's Yggdrasil and the, the eagle above the tree and the ser serpent below the tree. Obviously not to be taken literally. Uh, likening man to the trees also suggests mortality, since the trees are not immortal, having a span of life which ends in decay and death. This man is thus Aryan man, race of hope, and not the shining ones or elves who are immortal, and who were the original spiritual race on earth, but who now dwell in the land of immortals. Well, most us, a lot of Asatra are pretty sure that elves are, the Alpha are actually ancestral male spirits. It comes to almost the same thing, so. Anyway outside the material world in another world, a world removed after the great catastrophe. In a sense, these are the Asmagir, the Asa powers, who dwell in Odinzekar. 
They are the coming race. Oh, where's that thing? So Ask and Embla are not just from Emer. They also are, are just made distinct by the gifts of Odin, Honer, and Lothur, or, or uh, Vili and Ve. So I think there was lots of teachings surrounding that that were um, platonic in nature. That our enemy stole and turned into their into their nonsense. Um, but we're the race with the divine souls and the uh, holier physic physical bodies, I guess. If you look down. Still going? Yeah. If you look down at your wrist, you'll see the rivers, or maternal rivers, like Danu, our maternal mother, from Celtic tradition and Rigvedic tradition. You'll see those rivers, those streams, from the stream that, where um, Odin found the two trees. Many of our folk have blue eyes, divine, like, you know, reminding us of the, of the sky, rather than the, the dark ground, and we also have lighter hair of various colors, um, which, obviously blonde, um, it's like, they're like hints, that were that there's something spiritually different about us. Right? Golden hair from the sun, blue eyes from the sky, where the gods are. The holy rivers of life flowing through our veins. And it's just hidden, it's hidden in our mythology in a way that we, a lot of us don't understand that that Indo-European um, metaphor anymore, so it just goes completely over our heads. Uh, completely over our heads. I'm also working on something else, a story hidden in the Elder Futhark runes. Um, and that last it from Tiwaz to Othala seems like the creation of our race. And us establishing a holy land, uh, well, an Oda land, an ancestral land. Um, which would make the divine god coming down, Tiwaz coming down, and finding a gro grove of white birch trees, multiple trees to, to create a the first tribe of our folk, rather than just a few people. I mean, mythically, it's, a, it's the same thing, either a tribe from a grove or two, a couple from two trees. It's just symbolic of the first generation of our race. Um, and then came Manaz, just like in the Tacitus. Twisto and then Manaz, and then he had three sons who formed uh, various tribes. Actually, she had more sons than that, even. Um, and in the rune row, we have Manaz, and then we have Ingwaz, which is seed, but it also means descendants, of course. So, something to think about. Fire mythical, then I'm...